Ladies, gentlemen, DC family out there, we've got our first official trailer for Blue Beetle. It was actually supposed to release around 9 a.m. PST, but I think the DC Asia official channel <laughs> released it a little bit early, so everyone got a peek at it. Maybe you did, but I, I'm really hyped about talking about this, so if you're familiar with Blue Beetle or if you're not familiar with him, uh, let's just get into what we see in the trailer, what this first official look at the Blue Beetle movie gives us, because it, it looks like a fun time. And if you have a fun time during this video, I'd really appreciate a like. Helps me out a bunch. You don't have to do it, but if you do enjoy it, uh, just do remember to leave one because, yeah, it, it will help bring some more Blue Beetle fans in here. So let's get into it. The trailer picks up with our introduction to Jaime Reyes, played by Sholo Marduenia. So he's working a job, and I kind of like how it frames him, imagining this kind of more lavish lifestyle. But the trailer quickly reveals that there's some gum to scrub off the lounger. Now, if, if you didn't know already, Jaime Reyes is actually the third person to take the mantle of Blue Beetle. The very first Blue Beetle being Dan Garrett, who then passed on the mantle to the second Blue Beetle, of which I'm sure many of you know, Ted Cord. But this is where we see Palmyra City, and we get a really good look at it while he's talking to his sister, saying everything right now feels so out of reach. I see what you did there with reach. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then uh, I'll explain in a second. Now, the situation with what's going on here, because as many of you know, Blue Beetle, or should I say Jaime Reyes, uh, is normally in El Paso. I think in this adaptation, it's probably the case that Jaime Reyes Reyes went to the city to go to college and most of his family is still in El Paso but at the same time maybe they have moved to maybe the outskirts of the city. So up next given that Jaime is a recent college graduate it seems as though he's going for an interview at Cord Industries in Palmyra City with his family cheering right behind him as he goes into this job interview. As you can tell the tone of this trailer really demonstrates the tone of this movie being quite a very fun bright colorful family movie yet also at the same time superhero origin story. The trailer then cuts to Jaime waiting in the lobby of Cord Industries, recognizing Jenny coming down the elevator. Now, in this iteration, it's being reported that Jenny uh, is actually Ted Cord's daughter, and this actually really fits into the plot with what we see with Ted Cord's sister in this trailer, the, the seeming villain and what's going on there. Uh, it seems that, again, he already recognizes her, so it seems as though him and Jenny are already friends. Uh, they could go in the love interest route, but at the same time I'm, I'm not really sure it's a bit tropey but we're gonna have to wait and see but if jenny is indeed ted cord's daughter of whom is no longer blue beetle evidently from what we're seeing in this trailer it seems as though she has taken the scarab from cord industries and she hands it over to jaime reyes in none other than a big belly burger box of which i'm sure many of you recognize that burger chain from dc comics saying to guard it with his life as the alarms are sounding. So she says don't open it, but as we see with him and his family in their home in a couple of scenes later, they do exactly that. They open the Big Belly Burger box and inside is the Blue Beetle Scarab. And this is it, guys. This is when we get the suit up scene, if you will. Jaime Reyes holds up the Scarab. It awakens to him, lights up, then launches on his face as we get a great transformation scene as the Scarab somewhat fuses to him. So if you didn't know already, the most popular backstory with regards to the Blue Beetle Scarab is that, as it said in the synopsis as well, is that it is alien tech, which was first designed by an alien race known as the Reach. And the Reach are pretty much these intergalactic conquerors who, who have a pretty crafty way of taking over other planets. And then you guessed it, they use the Scarab. So bottom line, what they do is they send out these, uh, these really, really super advanced Scarabs to tons of planets. They wait for civilization to advance up until a semi-decent technological point. And then once they have done that, and upon the Scarab being discovered by someone, it would bind itself to the host and would wreak utter havoc. But the interesting thing about the Scarab that was sent to Earth is that clearly it doesn't operate that same way. And the reason being from the past, such as Young Justice, the Scarab was cleansed of the Reach's control through a ritual or in another iteration when the Scarab was on its way to Earth, it got freaking blasted by a Green Lantern, thus making it defective from its original programming, if you will. So all while it could still, you know, bond with a host as what it does here with High 
Jaime Reyes, Dan Garrett, Ted Cord, it wouldn't like take you over as an agent of the Reach and like wipe out all of planet Earth uh, in their name. So as I say, not all adaptations are copy and paste. So as a result, I'm not exactly sure what reason they're going to give here in live action as to the lore of the Scarab in this world. But back to this scene, like the suit up scene, I, I think it's really, really awesome, especially with Jaime Reyes as Uncle Rudy, played by George Lopez, just screaming away once again, just really giving you the family driven comedic vibes of this film, which I'm not going to lie, you kind of would react that way if you saw your nephew, brother or sister be launched upon the freaking ceiling and being taken over by a freaking scarab. First thing I want to say is that the suit does look brilliant. We already kind of knew that from set photos, but now we have like the sheen of the screen, some, you know, light CGI there, the way it glows up. And I think as we were predicted, it would look even better. In this moment, we kind of get to see some abilities of the blue beetle, or should I say the scarab itself, such as when Jaime Reyes is sent immediately into space, then he's brought back down into re-entry with him just landing above some water as we witness the scarab wings come out. There's just so much that they can do with this character and the scarab's abilities that these are just the first great teasers of what we've yet to see. Clearly, the Scarab has this somewhat AI in it. For example, when it first attaches onto him, it's like host acquired. Uh, now, I, I do have some thoughts on this, and, and these aren't my final thoughts. I haven't seen the freaking movie or anything, but I felt as though the AI voice kind of seemed a bit kind of neutral, if you know what I mean. Just kind of very like, I don't know, Microsoft Sam or like whatever narration you can get like that. It kind of AI voice sounding, right? This is probably a deliberate choice for that blandness to come across comedic in certain scenes such as later on when we have Jaime Reyes bring out a weapon and then the AI is just like nice choice but also the blue beetle vision so when we actually go through the perspective of Jaime Reyes in the suit I felt like the design of when he was looking around it, it kind of is just a bit lacking uh, maybe I'm being a bit too nitpicky and some of you are like oh you're just complaining over nothing I, I'm just saying how I feel I'm not being mega serious about it I was just a bit like oh are we gonna get loads of shot from this perspective because it just seems Seems a little bit off, you know, when we have the AI like identifying all of these things. It's not a big deal, but just wanted to be fully transparent. And these are quite literally the only criticisms I have for now with regards to our first look at the Blue Beetle movie. Another thing that I'm really happy about in this scene is that I think it's kind of cool that they're doing away with the whole trope of, oh, you know, the family are going to find out about oh, him becoming Blue Beetle. And when's that going to happen? And is he going to avoid telling the family about being a superhero kind of thing? Uh, with the family knowing right from the get-go, clearly, that he is Blue Beetle since they witnessed the Scarab freaking launch on his face. And so this is going to offer a little bit of a change from some of those other superhero origin story movies where they will support him through the journey and through the adventure with his uncle Rudy later on saying the universe has sent you a gift and you'll have to figure out what to do with it. And we see them involved in a bunch of scenes later on as Cord Industries is just going ham to get the Scarab back. So since we've now been introduced to the Scarab and Blue Beetle suit in the trailer, up next we see Jenny take Jaime and his family somewhere, of which I think will be Ted Kord's base of operations. Again, the Blue Beetle before Jaime Reyes' is Blue Beetle in this movie, especially if she does turn out to be Ted Kord's daughter. Now, she also knows quite a bit about the Scarab and its former use through Ted Kord. She tells the family that it's called the Scarab, some kind of world-destroying weapon, as we've kind of already been over some of the source material backstory there, designed to protect its host. Sometimes it does what you want, and sometimes it doesn't. And as we're hearing all of that from Jenny, we see Jaime is in the middle of the road and the Scarab protects him from a bus coming right into him. Now, this is likely a couple of minutes into him coming back down to Earth and the suit taking him for a joyride. And I was just kind of thinking, you guys know my nitpicky brain, it's a good thing that nobody got melted in the middle of that bus just in case they were getting up and getting ready to, you know, press the button for their stop. But here's where things get very interesting with regards to what the trailer reveals as the threat that Jaime Jaime Reyes has to deal with in the movie. So here we see Victoria Cord saying that the Scarab chose you, but it belongs to me. And we see a bunch of Cord Industries forces going after Jaime Reyes in the trailer. So I think it's fair to say that she's going to do anything to get the Scarab back. Now, if you didn't guess it already, yes, Victoria Cord is Ted Cord's sister. And we can't forget that Ted Cord was the second Blue Beetle, so Jenny probably knows that Victoria was maybe always envious 
of her brother in this iteration of having a scarab and the power that it wields. So she could be that somewhat typical villain being like, Re the scarab should be mine. I deserve it. It's rightfully mine. Likely after having taken over as CEO of Cord Industries after whatever happened to Ted Cord in this adaptation. And that's not me saying he's dead or anything like that. I, I just, he's clearly not the Blue Beetle anymore, so something, something has happened. So as a result, Jenny probably saw what she was trying to do with the Scarab, stole it from her, likely knowing that the Scarab wouldn't have been used for good things in her hands. And we get a scene, by the way, in this room, which is full of a bunch of devices. Now at first glance, I wasn't sure if they were meant to be a bunch of other Scarabs, but it doesn't necessarily seem like it. I would love to know your thoughts there, but either way, if I slow this down, you can see a couple of characters characters in the bottom left corner, possibly one of them being Jaime Reyes. Now I'm wondering if this has something to do with Victoria Cord using all of this to try and harness the Scarab when it was in her possession, even if she couldn't fully utilize it, if you will, the way that Jaime Reyes has. Perhaps she tried to replicate the Scarab, and these could be Cord Industries uh, mock-ups of other Scarabs, or they could be trying to replicate the tech of what the Scarab is, and also what the Scarab can do with creating pretty much anything. And we see another character in the trailer of whom you'd have to think is Carapax the Indestructible Man. Now he's one of Blue Beetle's villains in the comics of whom was an archaeologist looking into what the first Blue Beetle, Dan Garrett, was up to right before he died. Now in this adaptation, I wouldn't be surprised if Victoria Cord fits in with whatever they managed to successfully reverse engineer from the Scarab when she had it, as I was on about a couple of seconds ago, which could give us the big red robot tech that he uses in the comics that was worked on by Jarvis and Ted Cord. But again, adaptations not copy and paste, so they're probably going to like innovate on some of that source material, be influenced by it, and probably give it to Victoria Cord and Carapax the Indestructible Man, and maybe she's going to use him to go up against Jaime Reyes. We don't know exactly how this adaptation will mirror some of those things from the comics. Now in the scenes after this, we get a great display of Blue Beetle's abilities with a bunch of like Cord Industries tech and security forces going after them. It even seems like it gets to the point of their family home getting blown up, so they're going to probably have to go into hiding after that. Maybe even with Jenny leading the family to where Ted Cord had his headquarters, which leads me into what we see next because we see the family piloting Ted Cord's bug airship, which was pretty awesome to see. We also see various different weapons and abilities that Jaime Reyes is able to use with the Blue Beetle suit while up against Cord Industries, and we see him like send like a shockwave down that ripples a bunch of people back. We're obviously going to see him grow more and more confident while using the scarab throughout the movie, which is going to lend to some awesome action scenes. Not to mention, I love the part where it just goes full out Final Fantasy with almost clouds freaking sword with the AI saying, whatever you can imagine, I can create. And so the very end of the trailer, we actually get a glimpse at both the previous Blue Beetle suits with the family hanging around what I believe is the old Blue Beetle HQ. Now this could be on the bug airship, which is kind of just as true with movies, bigger on the inside than what actually seems. Uh, so there could be a, you know, a base of operations in there, but there's likely a place that Ted Cord actually had that houses all of this stuff. So you can see that there's the previous two Blue Beetle suits from Ted Cord and Dan Garrett. There's even like a third mannequin there, which could be for Jaime Reyes to put his suit on. In this location, you can see a bunch of old gadgets, old computer screens. So just showing you that these operations of Blue Beetles have been going on for quite some time. With Jaime Reyes even looking at this utility belt, if you will, saying it's like Batman stuff. And George Lopez is Rudy saying that Batman's a fascist. So it's, uh, I don't I don't know if people are going to be agreeing with that one, but again, just just showing you the humor of this movie, whether you like that joke or not, I feel like it's going to be very playful throughout as this trailer shows from start, like literally the very start to finish. And for those of you who are wondering if this Blue Beetle will be in James Gunn's new DCU, it does seem as though that is highly, highly, highly likely the case. Now, this quote is from James Gunn himself saying that I think we've gotten lucky with the next four movies, frankly, because we have Shazam, which 
which leads into the Flash, which resets everything. And that's important to note. The Flash movie, as per what you're seeing on this roadmap here, it resets everything. And then, he says, which then leads into Blue Beetle, which is totally disconnected. He can totally be a part of the DCU. And that goes into Aquaman, which leads into Superman, our first big project, as in, like, our first true big project, because it's got a new face to Superman, which had a previous face, and I think we all know who that was, so that's kind of what he meant by the latter of his statement there. But Blue Beetle, this movie, as you can tell, granted that it was made under the old regime in the DCEU, it is so self-contained that out of a lot of the characters who have appeared in the previous DCEU, it can easily be implemented over. But that's more or less what I've got to say about this trailer. I feel like for the first official trailer of the movie, uh, it looks like a fun time. It did a good job demonstrating the superhero origin story of Blue Beetle. A lot of people have been excited to see this comic book character come to screen as in the sheen of the screen in a cinematic universe level. And I, I wonder what a lot of Blue Beetle fans are thinking about this. Now, me, myself, I think it looks great. Everyone's been quite encouraging about this from the very first set photos of the practical suit. Now, what I've been wondering is, are a lot of people going to be still saying, as per what people have been saying, uh, I don't care about the remaining DC movies because of this reason or that reason, or it's not going to continue on anyway, but that's not technically true. So will you see this movie? Does it look fun to you? If you're a fan of the character in of himself, is this something that you just want to check out because, hey, they've done the Blue Beetle movie. It looks like a fun time. Let me know any any and all thoughts down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on what we saw in this trailer, some of the theories behind Victoria Cord, Ted Cord, the base of operations where you see the previous two suits, the Scarab, the lore behind the Scarab. What do you think they're going to do in this adaptation there? Would really appreciate a like on this video, especially if you got this far, guys. Of course, do subscribe to the channel if you want more updates on Blue Beetle, news on DC, reviews and breakdowns just like this. But I'm going to love you and leave you now. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. And I'll see you, fellow Scarabs. Blue Beetles in the next video. Goodbye.